Insightful Podcasts by Informative Hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights and Entertainment. This is episode 100. The Thrill of the Hunt. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my insightful and enlightened co-host, Michelle Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, sweetheart? Good. How are you? I'm cranky for some reason. Yes, you are. I need to throw you a Snickers or something. I'm not really sure why. Mm. So we're doing something a little bit different today. Yes, we are. This was kind of your idea for the format of the show today. So why don't you tell us what we're doing? So, uh, you know, normally each week we, you know, highlight different articles that, you know, have come up or stories that have come up. Um, You know, when we first started the idea of the podcast, we realized we wanted it to be like pop culture themed and... The idea was, oh, when we go to conventions and toy shows and things like that, we'll be talking about that. And unfortunately, for the past year, we haven't been able to to do that aspect. So I thought for our hundredth episode, we'd kind of, you know, take a break from talking about the the different news stories and things like that and kind of give you a little bit of uh, insight into the two of us and you know our our collections that we have obviously you can see um you know in the studio some of the things that you know we have but you know and maybe talk about how we got into it and and what our collection entails and and kind of give you guys a insight into you know what our house looks like you know, I think it was always one of those things I wanted to do, like a little tour, um, you know, because all of our friends who have, you know, come to our house always marvel at our collection. You know, it started out, you know, with a little bit of mine, then yours grew. And, and over the years, it, it's grown. It's taken over the whole house. Yes, it has. Um, so this was kind of, uh, you know, get. Uh, you know, a and A, I guess, in in some respects of of what without this, any cues, without any cues, just a whole lot of A's. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, what we're going to do to celebrate this uh, technically one hundred and one episode, but we won't count episode zero. Um, we have a whole lot of Dalmatians running around. Exactly, exactly. Or we it's should. Disney, so it, no, it works. it's Disney. There you go. Um. We're going to take a look at some of our collections. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a video we did for your collection. Mm-hmm. Just a quick uh, slideshow style panoramic of what we have out. Uh, same thing with mine. So we'll we'll talk about mine later in the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I thought it was kind of interesting for us to talk about, you know, what what got us started collecting. Mm-hmm. Um, what's our inspiration? Why do we do it? Um, where do we get our stuff from? Um, there's a lot of people out there that collect, you know, we did, uh, this week's 100th episode of insights into teens. We did fun and games Mm -hmm. yeah. and we had a special guest on, uh, who's also a collector and, Mm -hmm. and, you know, kind of, I think has sort of been a inspiration and motivation for some of what we've done as well. Uh, so it kind of fit the theme this week. Mm Mm-hmm. So we'll talk about that. Then we'll highlight your collection, talk about your collection. You have a couple of special items that you've cherry picked. I didn't because all the items that I want to, I would want to highlight are actually packed away for safety at this point in time. (laughs) Um, So I don't have anything hands on unless I grab something off the shelf here. Right. Because Lord knows I've got enough around here. Right. Right. There's Um, a couple of Darth Vader's somewhere. But we'll talk about. You know, some of the stuff in my mm-hmm. collection and, and what some of my prized possessions are. And mm-hmm. uh, 
we'll kind of go from there and in a slightly different show today. Yep. Shall we get started? Let's do it. All right. So I think the first thing that would probably be worthwhile talking about is when, and I'll ask you first, when did you start collecting and what prompted you to start collecting? That's a good question. I'm not really sure. It's kind of funny because not to, you know, piggyback on the the teens episode, you know, where, you know, Dan, who's a, a family friend, um, he knows the definitive when it was, like, what it was for him. You know, he tells this great story, and anybody that knows him knows that it's the Lost in Space robot because he had asked for it for Christmas. He never got it, and that became his holy grail. You know, he kept searching and searching for it, and, and that's what led him to it. I don't think there was anything for me where it was like, oh, my God, I have to have this. Um, you know, it was always some sort of Disney thing. Um, you know, back in the day, there really wasn't anything Haunted Mansion. Very, very, you know, it, it's funny now finding various board games and and model sets that came out in the 60s, 70s that had to do with the Haunted Mansion, but really Disney didn't um, merchandise based on their rides. Uh, any merchandise that they did was really, you know, T-shirts, you know, with Mickey Mouse on it. They didn't really start doing a lot of the collectibles until much later on like you could get something if you went to the park so you figure you know there were souvenirs um so i do have some of those in my collections that were souvenirs of when um the park first opened so i think it was just always um like i remember doing snow globes i think probably in the late 90s um i had actually were I was a cast member of the Disney store back in the day, uh, back when I was in, in college, so uh, the mid-90s. Um, so I, I started probably collecting a lot of the artwork, and that was back when they used to do the Cirrusel artwork. Um, so I have a lot of that. So that was probably really what the first major collectible thing was um that i collected uh every now and then i would collect the happy meal toys uh if they had like a whole set of uh disney or disney park really i think that was the majority of what i was collecting it wasn't necessarily disney but it was something to do with the disney park and then obviously it grew to be uh the haunted mansion and that's probably the majority of my collection, probably the majority of the more valuable stuff in, in some respects, but that's also more of the modern stuff too. I also have um, an extensive board game collection now, and a lot of those board games are from the 70s and 80s, uh, you know, so those are older. So I kind of have the, the gamut of, you know, a little bit of everything, I guess you could say. So a lot of people collect for the sake of investment mm -hmm. you know you buy an expensive piece of collectible merchandise and the hope is it just goes up and eventually you sell it mm -hmm. why do you collect do you collect as an investment do you collect for the nostalgia do you collect for the ambiance what's the drive for you in collecting i i don't think i've ever been a collector to think about what the value of it was going to be go, you know, Ooh, if I buy this now at $20, I'll be able to sell it, you know, later on for, for $40. I, I don't think that's ever been, um, a goal, you know, when, when looking for something, I think it's the, the enjoyment of having it. Um, it's the thrill of finding it. If it's, you know, if it was a hard to, uh, find piece, um, and and the nostalgia in some cases um like i don't remember like i know for you and and you'll probably talk about it um later on like there was 
I don't think there was really a toy that I had that I lost or I got rid of. And then I ended up buying it later on a, a, as an adult. Like, I don't remember there being, um, <clears throat> you know, anything like that. Um, so a lot of the older toys that I have aren't necessarily ones that I even maybe knew existed when I w was a kid. It was just, oh, wow, that's really cool. That's as old as I am, you know, type thing. So it's really just to kind of add to the collection. And, and it's funny because after um, <laughs> going through um, when my mom passed away and, and having to, you know, get rid of everything in her house and everything – you know, it kind of makes me think every time we go to a toy show or something or we buy something else, I'm like, uh, is this something else Madison's going to have to get rid of? But I'm hoping, you know, that she'll actually want to keep some of it, maybe possibly, or at least she can make some money off of it, you know, or we start selling it, you know, later on, uh, you know, in, in life or maybe not. Maybe, you know, we take it with us. Who knows? So we talk about a lot of the different shows and, and toy shows and mm -hmm. pop culture shows that we go to. And it's a great place to pick up a lot of collectibles. Where do you normally get your collectibles? Or, or in the past, where have you traditionally gotten your collectibles from? Well, the the first, you know, ones that I got came from the Disney store themselves or from being at Walt Disney World. Um, they have a... Uh, an art um, store, the the art of Disney. That's where their higher end items have come from. So that's where probably uh, a good portion of my more modern pieces have come from. But then a lot of my older, more antique, you know, collectible pieces, uh, those have come from uh, the the one toy show that we go to in Delaware. Um, that's, uh, I don't know what, well, they do it, they would do it like twice a year. So, um, uh, so that was one where I picked up actually the, uh, the clubhouse Mickey, you know, the Mickey Mouse clubhouse. I picked that up there. Um, and, uh, let's see. So we had that one, not really like comic cons, you know, because that's really where more of the newer stuff is. Um, where was the one? It was at the mansion. See, a lot of the toy shows, too, that we go to, they're usually like a one and done. You know, not a lot of them pop up uh, throughout. Um, we've picked up some stuff at flea markets, you know, right. a, a, as well that we've kind of, you know, lucked out. So it's kind of like a luck of the draw thing. <coughs> Excuse me. I think, you know, a lot of the older pieces you got off of eBay, um, you know, for birthdays and holidays and, and stuff that you've, you know, added to my collection. Yeah. <laughs> eBay, eBay is a, uh, a good source for some of the more obscure pieces that I, I managed to pull in for you. Um, although, uh, I've gotten into the habit of, seems like every time we go to Disney, we always make a trip to Art of Disney, and I always wind up getting you something at Art of Disney now. Right. That became kind of a uh, um, a tradition. Right. <laughs> so a lot of, again, the newer stuff, like the um, Jim Shore uh, collectibles and stuff. And, and that's the thing, too, is that there are certain um, artists who, in general, have pieces and then they do a disney line and in a lot of cases you can only get that disney line at a disney art store so you know sometimes it's uh hard to find pieces in in other locations so like jim shore as a as a example he does various cartoon characters he doesn't just do disney he does snoopy he does uh wizard of oz and things like that and you can find a lot of his items at your local collectible store you know like a christmas store or something that has it but any of the um and you can find some of his disney pieces there but you will never find like a haunted mansion piece of his there those are exclusively sold at disney 
Same thing with uh, the artist Shag, um, which I found out that's probably my most expensive, uh, one of my most expensive uh, collectibles. I have a frame print, which you'll see in in the video that we did. Um, again, you can find some of his prints, but the majority of his Disney World or Disneyland prints are usually only sold at uh, the parks or, you know, that's where it's easier to find it. You might find, you know, like a private seller uh, that's doing it, but the majority of them are sold um, in the parks. Well, how about we take a quick break? We'll come back and we'll show your video first. Okay. And then you can talk about some of your pieces and then we'll talk about my stuff afterwards. Sure. For seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com.
So that is the video we did for your stuff. Obviously, you can tell that the majority of what you have there was Haunted Mansion, but I did want to talk about that last piece that we saw there, mm -hmm. the animated cell that, that you have there. That's probably my, if I had to have like a most prized possession, that's probably probably close to that's to, that's to a it. pretty unique piece can you talk about that a little bit sure uh that is from a uh, company called uh animated lithographs or i i or animate uh a animated animation i think is the name of the company anyway it's a uh, company uh was late 90s um and they had a couple of different uh i want to say maybe 10 different types of animated lithographs uh, again that was back when art was kind of the the big collectible um and they had a couple of different disney ones they actually came out with other uh they came out with a uh wizard of oz one i think they came out with a couple of looney tune uh ones um, and that happened to be, I think, one of the first ones that actually came out, and it's Steamboat Willie. Um, and I've had that for, oh, God, 20-something 20 20 something years now, now that I think about it. Yeah, so that's that's probably, you know, one of my most prized. Uh, it runs on batteries. Um, <laughs> when the batteries start dying, it just goes off in the middle of the night um, and just... You know, uh, it was actually one of the pieces where um, it was having some um, some issues, some technical issues. And I contacted the company and they had me um, mail it to them for them to fix. And, you know, I don't even I could probably look online, but, uh, you know, I don't even know if the company still still exists. But what was cool was some of the more intricate ones that they uh, created later on actually had like little LED lights in it that would um, light up and stuff. There was a Sorcerer Mickey one where it would do um, like the splashing water and uh, it would light up and it would play uh, the music from Fantasia. So so that was a really cool one. But again, Steamboat Willie was, was always my favorite. So you obviously have um, a, a, a fondness for horror, shall we say. <laughs> Um, there, there was what much gave more, that away? there was much more in that video horror wise than just on a mansion though. Right. Tell us a little bit about some of the other horror collectibles you've got. Sure. So some of the other, uh, collectibles would be a lot of Dracula, um, and various versions of Dracula. Uh, we have the Bella Lugosi Dracula, uh, that I have a couple of, uh, dolls of that. Um, there's the Nosferatu. There's a couple of, uh, uh, I think I have a, a, a Funko Pop of him in, in that and then some other uh, variations of him in that. And then obviously the Bram Stoker uh, Dracula. I have a couple of different versions of of that uh as well um so yeah horror's kind of been you know I, i've been a very classic horror fan for as long as i can remember and it kind of and i think that's where um the disney and the other pop culture kind of blend together so nicely with the haunted mansion um i don't think i i really had as much haunted mansion stuff before we moved into the house. And I think it was, you know, when we were living in our apartment, you know, I had a couple of little pieces here and there. And when we moved into the house, our plan was that the living room was going to be my haunted mansion. That was the, the idea behind it. Um, and so that's why it looks, <laughs> that's why there's so much haunted mansion. So it basically looks like Halloween, all year long. So I'm, I'm decorated for Halloween, you know, Halloween all, all the time. So I think that kind of helped to fuel the fire <laughs> of what we were going to buy. Because if you remember, you know, we would kind of start out with generic 
Halloween decorations that we would find. You know, Halloween w- was the best time of year for me to redecorate the living room. That was kind of, you know, what we would do. And as the years have gone on and Disney has released so much more Haunted Mansion stuff, but also, you know, mainstream with like the Funko Pops and, and different things like that coming out, we kind of, you know, change things over. And during the pandemic, one of the things we did was we redecorated um, the living room. There's still one one more piece of furniture that that's going to get changed out once it becomes available at Ikea. Um, <laughs> but we redid the TV area um, and we organized all the pops. I have an, uh, a pretty extensive collection of living dead dolls. And that was really, again, it was one of those because we went to toy shows and I saw these things. I was like, "Ooh, that would be really cool. That would be kind of cool to to add. And really, up until a couple of months ago, everything was kind of all over the place. We really didn't have it as organized. And that was one of the things, you know, you helped me do where we redid everything and we said, OK, all the living dead dolls. Now let's all put them over here. Everything that's Dracula Let's put it over here. Okay, here's where the Haunted Mansion stuff is. We kind of created, you know, um, in the video, there's a whole little area of just the Madame Leota stuff. Um, And she's the, the, um, the, the woman that's the crystal ball. So there's a whole little shrine to, to Leota. And what's kind of funny is the cat that's in the beginning of the video, she's Leota and she's leota because of the haunted mansion so that's why you know she she was added um so we we you know we worked really hard to create you know the uh, you know the the balance of the force which is stealing your you know your thing um but we kind of you know changed it up to to make it um so not only is it you know obviously it's probably what 80 percent disney but the other 20 is, you know, extra horror stuff, um, you know, and then I have some other little horror, you know, things that aren't Dracula that are just kind of, you know, thrown in there, uh, you know, as well. So you've you've obviously got a pretty extensive collection just from what we've shown in the video itself. But there's other things that didn't make the video. Right. We have we have a curio in the in the kitchen that we did not get in. To the video. Right. And most of the stuff that's in the kitchen is probably more Mickey um, and Walt Disney World, you know, related. Right. So is there anything in the extensive collection that you have uh, now that you want to highlight that might not have made that video? Hmm. Oh, well. <laughs> the two pieces that I brought up here, maybe? I don't know. That was Do you your, want to talk about that? That was your prompts. So show us what you've got. <laughs> All right. Uh, so the first thing that I will show is from the 1970s. It is a Walt Disney World lunchbox. So anybody that's, you know, uh, a child of the the 70s, 80s, remembers having these, you know, lovely metal lunch boxes. Um, what's special about this one is this was a gift um, from Dan um, because Dan being the collector that he was, um, he got his love of collecting from his grandmother. Um, and his grandmother would basically just like go to the store, see something, buy it and leave it in the packaging and like never take it out because she, I don't know how she knew, but at some point she knew it was going to be worth something um so this was never used um when dan actually gave it to me for my birthday he still had the brown paper bag that it had come in when she bought it um one of the funny things is this one sticker is still on it the uh you know the aladdin sticker talking about uh you know the thermos and everything um the other thing that's really funny is the price sticker is still on it. Um, it was $2.99. Um, if you look on eBay, 
most of these you'll find are used and and uh, dirty and bent with lots of nicks and used, and they're going for like forty to fifty dollars. This one is probably, I would say, probably more, maybe even a hundred and fifty, because the other thing too is, and not a lot of them that you find online have it, but if you look inside, it's nice and pristine, and. The original thermos, never used. <laughs> and this is still funny, too. And the little sticker to write your name on it nice. is still in there. So, yeah, this is probably, I would say, 150, 200, easy. So you know? there's there's people out there who dedicate their collections just to these uh, metal mm -hmm. Uh, lunch boxes, right? Um, you know, they, they have entire collections of these because an entire series of these has been, had been put out for right two decades, I think, mm -hmm. something like that. Um, but the other piece that you have that you were going to show, uh, is to me, I think, is even more nostalgic because they don't make these anymore, like the concept of the toy itself, like they still make. Lunch boxes, but they're plastic. Right. Well, and the other thing too is they the D twenty three the the Disney um uh uh why can't I think of the what's the D twenty three fan club? Thank you. Oh my god, I can I was like, it's this club that you belong to. The fan club. They actually came out with a reproduction of the lunchbox and inside had pins um, and just the lunchbox with the pins was going for $85. And this was a, a gift that, you know, if you were a member of the fan club, uh, you got it for free. Um, so it's kind of funny. So there's versions of the metal, you know, uh, lunchbox, you know, floating out, but yes, the, so the let me, clubhouse. let me actually go to camera three for this sure. one here so we can show it also. So what you have here is the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Mm -hmm. Also from the 70s. That's Weeble Wobbles. It's the Weebles. Because, you know, Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. So. so now this was a reflection of what, the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse TV show? Yes, this was from the, you know, the 1970s. Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. So, you know, most people remember the, the 1950s version with Annette Funicello and, and, you know, and that whole cubby and Karen and whatever. This came out in the 70s and it was kind of in relation to the 70s version of the Mickey Mouse uh, Clubhouse. Now, this was not a complete set. Um, the complete set came with a, a play mat that you would put it on. And also, uh, right here had a flag with a flagpole. Um, but everything else, uh, I actually have some of the weebles are from multiple sets. Uh, cause I think it only came with four. It came with, uh, Billy, Karen, Pluto, and Mickey. And you have the little, you know, the little TV camera so you could put on your little TV show. Uh, you have your little mailbox so you can get your mail, your little rocking chair. There's a little seesaw. And then. So the front door opens. The front, ah! And you're no, not, don't worry. They won't knock. They won't fall <laughs> down. And you're not carrying off. Um, so, so where did you get this? This one we ended up getting at the the toy show that was held in Delaware. Uh, that toy show is a um, it's linked with a train toy show. So you know the one day it's the trains and the second day it's toys. And it's you you know the majority of the toys are you know older toys. You know they have a, some more modern stuff, but most of the vendors there are you know people selling either their collection or they might have a store and you know they sell older things and this just happened to be you know one of the things she had it in a box and make me an offer i said okay <laughs> and i made her an offer and it became uh became mine 
Now, have you made an effort to complete this by finding the other pieces that are missing? Well, we actually ended up buying another um, another one <laughs> probably a couple years later. Uh, so I have another house and, you know, some of the pieces, you know, from that set kind of help to to complete this one. I don't think it's one of those things where I'm I'm, I'm not a completist when it comes to that. So if I can get the full set, great. If I don't, all right, whatever. No big deal. It brings me joy. It's it's in our kitchen, you know, so I see it every day and I just go, hmm, you know, makes me happy. So is there a holy grail out there, a, a piece of unattainium that you have not gotten your hands on that you very much would like to get your hands on? Hmm. Something obviously within reach. I'm not talking about a thirty thousand dollar super rare uh, piece or something well, like that. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't think there is. Like I. I'm, yeah, I don't. That's the thing for me. A lot of the things, like until Dan had shown me this, you know, lunchbox. I never knew it existed. But of course, now that I have it. I know they exist and, you know, every now and then I kind of look online and say, oh, how much is it going for um, type thing. Um, I don't think there's really maybe there's one thing and it's one of those things where I remember it. It's it's probably the one and only thing that I remember from from my childhood that I wouldn't even know how to look it up because I don't really remember that much about it. I remember it being like a piano and I don't know if it was like a player piano type thing or, or what it was, but it played Disney music and I think it had Mickey and Minnie on it. And I remember, um, my father had it in his apartment and I would play with it when I would go to visit him, but I don't really, you know, like I, I don't know if I saw a picture of it, if I, could go, oh my God, that's it. You know, that's probably, you know, way, way back in 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 my memory bank of, of everything. Um, you know, what I would want would be, you know, like something from the Haunted Mansion. You know, that would be, that's not really as obtainable or within my price range right. is really, you know, so if the sky, you know, <coughs> if, if money were no object, it would be, you know, something from the actual, you know, ride itself, um, you know, like or a costume even from, you know, from one of the cast members and that stuff, you know, kind of floats around uh, eBay. Um, and that's the thing is, if you give me like a couple of hours to look on eBay, I'm sure I could find something that would be like, oh, that would be really cool. I think for me, a lot of it is when we go to these toy shows and um yard sale type things and like i find something that i didn't know existed and that's kind of the oh that's really cool i didn't know they made that you know of course then i you know go on my phone now and and look to see how much you know how much it's going for so that i don't overpay um but yeah for me i don't think there's that oh, i gotta have it so do you sell any of your collectibles nope <laughs> would you sell any of your collectibles I don't know. That's a good question. It's like, which child do you get rid of? Mm. The <laughs> one you like the least. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe if, you know, the right price came around or, you know, if it was one of those, maybe some sort of bartering thing where, okay, I give you this to trade up for something, you know, for something else. But I could, yeah, I could probably see, you know, us downsizing, you know, our collection maybe at, at some point. There's um, somebody that I'm friends with on on Facebook, you know, a, a Disney collector. <laughs> it's like if you think we have an extensive collection, he has a freaking museum. Like he actually has an outside warehouse it's almost to the effect of the um steve sansweet right with all of his stuff and he and he actually has 
you know, from Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, an actual car from Mr. You know, I can't even imagine how much his, you know, I've always wanted to just message him and be like, what's a ballpark? What your collection is worth? I'm sure it's in the millions. I can't, I can't imagine that it's not a couple of million dollars, you know, and he's, um, you know, and, and he has it broken down into different sections. So, you know, different characters and, and he has a very nice haunted mansion. Um, How much do you think your collection's worth? Um, I don't know. Would you say like 50,000? I, I don't know. I don't know the value of most of your stuff, but sure. I don't know. Maybe. I don't think it's more than 50. You know, I would say probably, you know, because there's probably a couple of people. Well, I know there's at least one piece that's a thousand dollars over a thousand dollars, just that. And then there's, you know, probably so eh, 30 to 50, maybe. All right. Was there anything else you wanted to highlight before we uh, go to commercial? No, I don't think so. All right. We'll be right back. Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Talking to real teens about real teen problems. Explore issues from braces to puberty, social anxiety to financial responsibility. Each week, we talk about the topics concerning today's youth. We look at how the issues affect teens, how to cope with these issues, and how parents, friends, and loved ones can help teens handle these challenges. Check out our video episodes on youtube.com backslash insights into things. Catch our audio versions on podcast.insightsintoteens.com or on the web at insightsintothings.com.
So that is a somewhat disorganized look at <laughs> most of my collection, mm -hmm. which is uh, consists most well almost entirely of Star Wars, but mostly of Darth Vader and Sith lords. Right. One of the things that was up on the wall in, in the shot there, there is a uh, an energy sword from Halo that is up there. I used to collect swords, and in fact, when we moved to the house, none of my swords made it up on the wall. They're all out in the shed right now. But right. <laughs> That was acquired after the move. Right, right. So when did you start collecting? Uh, I started collecting, I would say I started collecting probably in 1980 when I had my Star Wars year for Christmas. Okay. Uh, because everything that I got that year I had retained uh, and unfortunately lost after I moved out of my mother's house and left it all in the attic. Mm. And when my... Mother passed away. My brother took control of the house. And then when he moved and downsized, I have no idea where any of that stuff went. Mm. So I was a collector at that time, but I was not a, a conscientious collector. Mm. I, I did not buy one to play with and one to, to collect. Right. So everything I had was out of the box. Mm -hmm. In fact, some of the ships that were in the video were some of my original ships from my youth. Very cool. So. So what would be your most prized possession? Um, see, I, I, when I think of collecting, I think of two different categories. I mm -hmm. think of the nostalgic part of it. Okay. And then I think of the valuable design to be collected part of it. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I try to collect are original figures right so of that genre probably the most important one that i think i have is i do have a carded uh empire strikes back darth vader that i had acquired at our uh antique toy show down in delaware at the nerd temple down there mm -hmm. uh, it's not in the best condition but it is fully intact the card itself is a bit rough it's probably a, a, a pretty low grade on the card itself, mm -hmm. but I had acquired it for a very reasonable price, and then I had it priced out, and you know it was worth about fifty percent more than I paid for it. Wow! Not that I'd sell it, mm -hmm. but because it's Darth Vader and it's an original toy, mm -hmm. so that made it important to me. Right, right. The collectible type thing, probably the 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 most important one I had, and you didn't see it too well in the video because it's on a bottom shelf right now after I reorganized one of the curios, mm -hmm. is a piece that we had gotten when we were at ZoloCon mm -hmm. at the Fuge. Mm -hmm. um, it was a piece that came out in the 90s, mid-90s. I had been looking for it for the longest time. And they had two or three other pieces that came out that were like it. It was basically Darth Vader on the stairs from the carbon freeze chamber. Okay. And there's three other pieces that are of the same genre and style, all of which I have. Okay. But this was the original one, and I couldn't find it. And we went to ZoloCon the one time, and the last room that we went into, mm -hmm. the last guy in the corner was the guy that had it at the top of his pile there. Mm -hmm. And I knew it didn't matter how much he was asking for it, I was buying it. Okay. Uh, and I did. And I got it for a reasonable price, and, and that was probably the biggest score. But really, the, there were two toys that I have that are not Star Wars mm -hmm. that are probably my biggest scores. Uh, one is a uh, very well-maintained Steve Austin from uh, Six Million Dollar Man. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things of, about these dolls, one is – um, through the back of the head, you can look through the back of the head and he had a bionic eye, so he had right. a telescopic eye. So there's a hole in the back of the head that you can look through and it's a telescope. Mm -hmm. But the other thing was he had on his arm, he had a piece of fake skin. It was, it was just, um, uh, rubber, um, that was on there, like flexible rubber that you could pull back and you could see the bionics in his arm. Well, that almost always dry rots and falls off. The piece that I got, it was in very good condition. So that's one. And then the other one is, you know, as I was growing up, I was a child of Transformers. 
and I always wanted to have uh, an Optimus Prime, and, and unfortunately, my parents were not particularly well off. The couple of Transformers that I get, did get were some of the lower grade ones, and Optimus Prime was always exceedingly expensive. Mm -hmm. So we were happened to be at Wizard World the one year, right? And there was a, a person who had it wasn't box, but it was complete. He had all the stuff to it because there's a ton of accessories to go in the trailer and everything else. And he like pieces that are normally missing because his hands come off and his gun comes off. So all these little pieces usually wind up missing. And he had the whole complete thing. And I I saw it right at the beginning of the show. And I walked around for about four or five hours around that show debating whether or not to get it. And and I made sure when I walked out of there, I had that piece. Mm -hmm. So there are actually the two non-Star Wars pieces that I think are probably my, they're not incredibly valuable pieces either. Mm -hmm. Like the the Optimus Prime might be $100, $150 and the $6 million man might be $100. They're not incredibly valuable. Right. But they're very rare for the condition that they're in. and. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's one of those things that I collect because it takes me back to my youth. And these are the two things that really take me back to my youth. So would you ever consider selling anything that's in your collection? Um, I'm sad to say that I actually did consider selling those two pieces mm -hmm. specifically. Yeah. Um, I had been out of work. I had been out of work for almost a year. Uh, unemployment had run dry a few years back. This was almost 10 years ago now. And, uh, you know, you, you get to the point where you need to start making decisions so you could pay your bills. Mm -hmm. And I was going to broker the sale of these two items through Dan, our mm -hmm. friend, cause he was uh, running his, uh, his toy store at the time. Mm -hmm. And I packed everything up. We took it up there on a trip to one day and I left it with him and, you know, he was working to, to line up a buyer and I don't know, a month, two months later, maybe I, I landed the job that I have now and I, I grabbed those back like, and no, took them off the market because I did not me. want to sell them. <laughs> so yes, under duress, mm -hmm. I would sell them, mm -hmm. but I don't see them as an investment. I don't see any of my collectibles right. as an investment. Right. My collectibles are nostalgia. Mm -hmm. You know, they're a piece of, even even if I buy something that, that I personally didn't own as a child, it's a part of my youth. Mm -hmm. And, and I like the surround, it's, it's like, it's like, almost like, like uh, a warm blanket, you know, a comfortable blanket, ha being surrounded by the things. A warm hug. That's what it is <laughs> to me. You know, it's, it's something that's a very soothing thing i can sit downstairs in my man cave and i can look around and i can enjoy the various pieces that mm -hmm. i have and the the victories that i mm -hmm. you know the like the name of the podcast today thrill of the hunt you know the victories that i had in, in acquiring these mm -hmm. things i have no desire to sell any of these but i don't expect my kids to have to hold on to them either you know if if god forbid i'm gone at some point in time and my kids don't want the stuff. It might be an opportunity for them to have a little bit of inheritance that they wouldn't otherwise normally have had because I, I spend a lot of money on my collectibles. <laughs> and, and, and I would like to, to, to think that, you know, Maddie would keep a couple of pieces to remember us by, right. you know, to pass down to, to her, you know, kids if she you know has or, or like um, i could see that there's yeah. probably a couple of pieces sam would want to keep right but i wouldn't expect them to keep everything right i wouldn't yeah and that's the thing is i wouldn't expect them to co you know to keep everything but you know it, it's also stuff where we pretty much know there's a, a buyer for it you right. know um whereas you know like my mom you know my parents never really collected um, you know, much of, of anything. And unfortunately, uh, you know, they had a mold problem in the house. So there was a lot of stuff that just had to get tossed, you know, because it got ruined, you know, so there's like a couple of little things that I have from her house, nothing, 
you know, big or, or, or major, mostly furniture, but nothing really collectible wise where, you know, between the two of us, <laughs> we have... <laughs> We have well, quite a, like you the know. kids aren't going to get rich off of our collection, right? They're not going to, you yeah, know, especially mine. Like my stuff, I don't collect my stuff for for investment purposes, right? And I don't, I don't either, you know. I, th- but they're also not going to get, you know, like five bucks for, right. you know, something. Well, I mean, yeah, like I spend, you know, I think the last piece that I bought was maybe a couple hundred dollars, and mm-hmm. it holds its value, but it's not right. doubling, tripling, quadrupling right. in. Right. Price. Well, and that was the thing, too. I happened to look before the show just to see, you know, the one Haunted Mansion um, miniature that I have. And Disney still sells it. So there's no markup. It, it's still the same price it was, yeah. you know, three or four years ago when when we bought it. You know, so it's like, all right, well, it's good to know it's still holding its value. It's not like, oh, it's worth 10 bucks now. Right. And uh, that's the thing, you know, like the collectible thing. pieces that I have, like there's a... There's a uh, Darth Vader statue kneeling um, from Empire Strikes Back. There's a uh, the other Darth Vader statue on the stairs that I got. And, you know, there's like f- probably six or seven pieces like that mm-hmm. that they don't make anymore. Right. But the even though the prices have gone up from what the retail price is, you're not going to Antique Roadshow and, right. and having a, a – Fifty thousand dollar discovery show up, right? You know, right, nothing like that. Right, right. And there are pieces out there that are still out of print that I would like to get. Mm-hmm. You know, there's one particular diorama. It's called the Diplomatic Mission, and and it's Vader choking the Captain Antilles from A New Hope. And I'd love to get my hands on that because mm-hmm. I missed the one opportunity that I had to buy it at the time because I didn't have the money on me. Right, and. I haven't been able to find it. Right. And that one originally went for, I'm going to say somewhere around 150, 200 at the time. Mm -hmm. And it's going for like $800 now if you buy it. That I would love to have that because it's a really cool piece and it really epitomizes what Darth Vader is. Mm -hmm. But I won't spend $800 on it because I don't think it's worth that. Right. Uh, if I could spend somewhere close to what retail was at a show, I'd do that. But, mm-hmm. you know, that's not going to happen because they made so few of them. Right, right. Uh, the one thing I would I would also want to add in there is uh, kudos to uh, Ikea for making such affordable curio <laughs> cabinets because we have, <laughs> what do we have, four of them now, I think? Three uh, of them? Well, I have one and, and you have two. Have two. So, so we have, yeah. So yeah, we, have we love Ikea curios. Yes. They keep work. making. <laughs> keep making them. <laughs> Yeah, that's where, you know, even the, you know, my Haunted Mansion, a lot of my Haunted Mansion stuff is, yeah, your, you know. Your in, cube that we have yeah, there now. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, Ikea. <laughs> anyway. Uh, anything else that we wanted to talk about today? Not that I can think of. Is there something that I missed? Not that I'm aware of. We're not going to do any insightful picks this right, week. Right, right. We'll save that for next week. I didn't have anything to show off. The stuff that I would have shown off is stuff that's packed up and and packed away. (laughs) My Death Star, Assault the Death Star game, Mm -hmm. original, because they did reprint it in in the same box uh, art. Uh, But I have an original of that. My uh, Sail Barge, Java Sail Barge game, that's Mm -hmm. packed away. My Darth Vader, my card of Darth Vader is all packed away. Mm Mm-hmm. So I don't keep any of the the really valuable stuff out on display unless it's designed to be on display. Mm-hmm. So I don't have anything to show. It's okay. Anyway. So I think that was it. Mm-hmm. We're, we're about at the hour mark here. Okay. I think we showed everything we were looking to show. If mm-hmm. anybody has any questions um, or would like to know more. Or make us an offer on something. Or, yeah, <laughs> make us an offer we can't refuse. <laughs> Uh, we certainly are open. We'll be happy to answer any questions. I uh, would also su- uh, invite people to subscribe to the podcast. You can get us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, and pretty much any place you can get a podcast. Uh, you can get the audio versions of our podcast if you look for insights into entertainment. You can get the video versions of all of our podcasts listed as insights into things. And if you do want to reach out and give us uh, some feedback or ask questions about any of the things we talked about today, 
You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can find us on Twitter at insights underscore things. We stream six days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com backslash insights into things podcast. You can get us on Instagram at insights into things. You can find the audio versions of all of our podcasts at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com. You can get high-res versions of our videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. And if you don't remember any other website and you want to go to our main website, which also has links to our other podcasts as well, that is at insightsintothings.com. And I think that's it. Another one in the books. Have a good week, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.